work, but that's okay. I started to realize something as a salesperson. The same exact thing that a public speaker does, a salesperson does, and an entertainer does. There are common denominators to what they do. Anyone want to take a stab at what some of those might be? Breathe with their stomach. Just Breathing with your stomach is fine. They have their content down. They know their song. It has a beginning. It has a middle. Maybe a musical break. And an end. So is every great speech. Think of Dr. Martin Luther King. Think of John Kennedy. Think of Obama. Captivates you. Right? That's what your goal as a public speaker is. It's also what your goal in life is. So I believe that verbal communication, face-to-face -face communication, is the cornerstone of civilization and advancement. But here it is, content preparation. No fear, self-confidence. Know who your audience is. That's a really big way to get to you so that you can share things that they'll understand and relate to. Vocal dynamics. This is really important. How you say what you say. And we'll examine in a couple of minutes what's known as three B's of successful communication. You also have to have, like you said, breath control. And that's easy to learn. Most people, unfortunately, when they're speaking or singing, don't really breathe the right way. You've been taught to breathe from your chest. Public speakers and singers breathe from the belly. Your belly goes out, mine's a bit like, <laughs> your belly goes out on the in, and on the out, it pulls in. Body, facial gestures. This is what I call not only body language, but the motion of emotion. So everybody stand up for a second. When we're talking, when we are giving a pitch, when we're telling a story, our bodies, our bodies give more information than the words that we say and the way that we say those words. So I want you to think about that when you come up tonight and do a presentation for us. And please, no one has to do this if you don't want to, but I suggest that you do. Number one, it's fun. Number two, you'll get some great feedback from the people in the room and from me as well. So here's what I want you to think of. I want you to close your eyes, please, and show me with your posture, with your entire body and your face, what it looks like to be incredibly depressed. Incredibly depressed, the worst day of your life. That's it, your posture goes down, your shoulders slump, your breath gets shallow. Maybe your face grimaces. I want you to remember that posture. Ishmael? Depressed. You look too happy, kid. You do. <laughs> but now you're going to get your opportunity. I want, life is great. Just a bowl of cherries. Now what I want you to do is reverse that process. I want you to be in that negative position. And now I want you to snap into powerful. You ready? Snap! Powerful! Ready? Kill the world! <laughs> snap back into that depression. And now back to that. This is what people see in you when you talk. Please sit back. Three B's of communication. Someone came up with this idea a really long time ago. He was a scientist looking at how people can communicate better. And please remember, this is not just about pitching. This is about storytelling. This is about your life and communicating with other human beings. Unless you want to live in a cave, you got to communicate with other human beings. No matter what you do for a living, you're eventually going to have to tell your story, tell somebody why you did what you did, and convince them that it was a good thing. The three B's of communication. Voice, vocal, and verbal. Let me show you something. Next, I might need your help. 
Because uh, sometimes they say that, uh, you know, it's worth a million words being able to show somebody a video, and that's exactly what I'm going to do, maybe. How am I doing so far? Everybody okay? Yeah, I can't find it. All right. Ah, oh, here we go. This uh, is really just going to let you see what this is all about in a really graphic and beautiful way. So, successful communication, the three Bs. Number one, visual. What people see when you're talking to them. Verbal, what you say. Visual, your posture, what we just did, how you look. How do you engage that audience? Even from a sit position, you can do it. And you're bold. This is how you speak. It's the tone of your voice, your pitch, your modulation, your use of your emotion to bring it through your voice. So when you're talking about something that's very soft, you talk softly. You want to get people into it, you get them excited by how you use your voice. The motion of emotion. You give the motion, and the emotion will follow naturally. Vocal, visual, and verbal. Here's the thing about that, the three Vs. It's called the 738-55 rule. 7% of what people get from you when you're talking is actually the words that you use. Your grammar, the words that you say, 7%. That's not a lot, right? 38% of what people get from you when you're speaking is how you say what you say. That's vocal dynamics. That's the ability to be able to change the tone of your voice, to be able to slow down when you want to slow down. When I talk softly, People want you to talk louder, so I'm grabbing you in there. Now you can hear me, and now I'll throw you what I want to throw you. This is why music is just like public speaking. Three Vs of communication. What you say, 7%. 55% of what people get from you when you're presenting or talking is how you look, what you wear. What's happening, Drive? Welcome back. Thank you. So just remember that. It's not exactly what you say. It's how you say it and how you look while you're saying it. Right? Does that make sense? Doesn't make sense to me. Matter of fact, public speaking and having fear doesn't make sense to me either. But we all suffer and many of us suffer from it. It's not a funny thing. It can stop us in our lives. Stop us at school from asking questions. Stop us on the job from giving ideas. Why? Well, I don't want my manager to think that I'm an idiot, so I'm not gonna tell him that really great idea. I'll protect myself, not really. So it's not funny. However, Jerry Seinfeld, the comedian, said something. He said, recent surveys state that the biggest fear in people's lives is public speaking. Death is number two. You hear that? Death is number two. You think, you think that's funny, right? It is. Here's why. Because if you had to go to a funeral and someone asked you to do the eulogy, you'd rather be in the coffin. <laughs> Today we're going to get over perhaps some of those trepidations that you have. Remember. People don't really judge you all the time. You gotta judge yourself. So, the emotion of motion, we talked about it. Be able to move around a little bit, change up the posture. Sometimes in presentations, I'll rip my, you know, my, my, my jacket off, you know, to make a point. Hey, how am I doing with this? So here we go again with the body language. You can't, the body doesn't lie. It doesn't lie. Your face expression doesn't lie. You can't go like this and go, I feel terrible. <laughs> no one's going to buy that shit. It's not what you say. 
It's how you look when you're saying it. Also, it helps you understand the feelings of the people that you're communicating with. And last but not least, it enhances your communication skills because it's part of those three Ds. Here's another part that most people don't talk about. And I need you to remember this. I believe that public speaking, whether you're pitching your company or telling a story about your life, is a conversation. You gotta be able to get people to respond to you. Not by just blurting out everything and then going, does anyone have questions? You wanna try to get people involved with what you're doing while you're doing it. That will guarantee that they're gonna be a part of the conversation and not just a non-interested listener. So, I think God gave us two hands. Want to help ourselves, want to help others. And you know what? God gave us two ears so that we listen twice as much as we speak. Now let me show you what that means. I'm going to tell you a little story. Just a really short story. And then I'm going to ask you a question. I have a cat. I love my cat. I have other animals, but I really love this cat. And this morning I woke up and the cat threw up everywhere. That's my story. How many of you are thinking that you can relate to what I just said? Raise your hand. Anybody have an animal? Okay. So let's say it was my grandma that threw up. Anybody have a grandma? <laughs> All right. Here's my point. The moment that I start talking, knowing that you're going to eventually have to respond to me, you start thinking about what you are going to share with me to let me know that you know what I'm talking about. Then what happens is that your mind starts turning over in your head what you're going to say, and now you don't hear the rest of my conversation. Two ears, one mouth, one reason. Speak. Listen. Listen twice as much as you speak. I don't even know what the slide is. Oh, great. I love this part. So, uh, okay, we're going to jump into this in a second, but I want everybody to stand up now with me. I told you you were going to be doing stuff today. Now, I want to show you the correlation between what I call the music of public speaking. And I want everybody to repeat after me. Repeat. <laughs> He's catching on. <laughs> That's exactly. Wow, you got such beautiful blue eyes. I know, right? <laughs> it's like you swim in them. Um, so, and what I want you to do is I want you to try to imitate how I say what I say. This is called call and response. Okay? Ready? Ready. Repeat. Stand up, everybody! Stand up, everybody! Repeat after me! Repeat after me! Now shake your body! talk. You followed my lead, and you expressed yourself through the God-given beauty of your voice. Whatever your voice is. You know, some people will really love talkers. Some people I've been working with Migs now for a while, Migs talks a while a minute, and boy, I don't even know what he's saying. When to to it, it was a well, you know him. <laughs> that's my, that's my sister. So I just want to emphasize that when you come up tonight, and we're going to start that right now, strictly on a volunteer basis. And so far we've talked about these three Bs. You've learned a little bit about how to use your God-given gift of your vocal voice. 
You'll use the words that you use to express yourself, and you will tell a story with your body as well. So although they say this is a pitch class, because we have students here, I want to open this up to everybody. So if you don't have a pitch that you want to show to everybody for feedback, because this is where the interactivity comes in. Yes, Ishmael? Oh, I'll let it. Oh, good. <laughs> good. So if you don't have a pitch, tell us a story. Uh, I mean, I any story. Your cat threw up. Your first kiss. Traveling here today to the Venture Cafe in traffic and you wanted to kill somebody. Mm -hmm. Whatever it might be. But please remember, use your body, use your voice, and the content. Anything you want to say. Well, please, right up, baby. Come on. Are you getting the Ah, he's high fiving the audience, taking the long run around. That's all right, baby. So, how's everybody doing? Great. This whole lesson and this whole advice has me hyped up. I'm not really a social type of person. But I'd like to step out of my comfort zone and be able to learn how to be social and learn how to present and talk. But for now, I want to take you guys on like a journey from the past. So before I founded this company and before I got involved with this amazing company, company that I'm involved with, I was like down in the dumps. I was depressed. I didn't have nothing to do with my free time. All I did was go to work, come back home. It was a routine, a routine that I was not happy with, but I stuck to it because it was the only thing available to me. So when I found about this company, they came to me and told me that I have an opportunity to be able to not only make money, but to help other people out. And here I am. <laughs> Comments around the room. Very energetic, like when he came, you know. Very energetic when he came around. He captured your attention at first. Mm -hmm. When he started speaking, how did you feel about the volume of his voice? Um, I feel like you could have spoken louder and like more, a little bit more confidence with his speaking. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know what? We, we sometimes all look nervous. Uh, that becomes a reason because we have a little bit of fear of trepidation. He doesn't know you. Here's something to think about, everybody. If you're presenting to people like this, you'll never see him again if you don't want to. So you actually got nothing to lose. I thought he did a really great job. I'm going to give you just a little bit of a tip, if you don't mind. There's nothing wrong. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to put your hands on your belly. And I want you to suck in. Let the belly out. Let the belly out. <laughs> All right, so I got a bigger belly. Right. And now I want you to take a bit in. And now out. And now in. And now scream. Ah! Louder. Ah. Louder! Ah. Louder! Ah. Louder! Ah. So you can speak louder. The other thing too is that um, <laughs> over a period of time, what seems to happen is an old adage. Amateurs practice something till they get it right. Professionals practice until they can't get it wrong. Keep on talking to people. You are a social monster. Thank you. Come on, Daniel. Uh, Daniel has a little bit of liquid encouragement yes. with him. <laughs> That's what I called it for years, Daniel. What are you going to tell us, Daniel? Okay, so I just got here about 10 seconds ago. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> This is a dog walking class. We're going to teach you how to deal with groups of dogs uh, on a psychological impact. No, 
this is public speaking. Tell me a story, anything about your life. You got 60 seconds. Born in Brazil, uh, 1987. Born to middle class, later, poor class, once the currency changed, everything went down. Lucky enough to live in a good place and go into a bad place. Even luckier to have uncles and aunts in the United States to adopt me as their own. Coming here, I went to school, I dropped out of college, I became a salesperson in my field. Once I became a salesperson in my field, I started into self-development, and as self-development took over, I became better as a person. No more doubts, I take risks. I didn't know what was going on. That's about it. Nice. <laughs> comments, remember, the comments also should be about the three Bs. Did he communicate with his eyes to the audience? Okay, some said yes, some said no. That's all because you get things in a different way, okay? And remember that, that's really an important thing. You can't change anybody's mind about anything. They're gonna believe what they wanna believe, okay? And incidentally, as a salesperson, you've probably gotten to understand that the client never really buys for your reason. Yeah, you have to paint a picture. They pretty much have to, what we like to say, answer their own questions, like you ask right. questions, mm -hmm. and if they agree to their own, how is his level of pitch enthusiasm or telling a story? I, I felt like uh, I was waiting for the turn, right? Usually when you start with a sad story, then you have, have the turnabout. It gets positive, but that never happened. <laughs> okay. Maybe ran out of time. Well, I came to the United States, I think that's pretty positive. I think so. <laughs> point, 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 here's, here's my feeling, okay? I mean, I, it's, because, I, like, you know, you dropped out, you know, all this stuff happened, but well, then I'm sure it's good stuff, but maybe. Uh, yeah, within 60 seconds of history, right? I just I felt like 60 seconds going away. I just wanted to be respectful. In your, and I think that that's really wonderful, okay? And I always like to set the goal at 60 seconds, but one of the things that you should focus on is those snaps. Okay. You're right, his story started off very depressing. But the moment you found yourself, yes. express that, let people know that. Use your body, use your vocal ability. Okay? okay. All right, excellent. Who'll be next? All right. Thank you so much. All right. You know, my hair used to look like <laughs> longer. Yeah, except it was longer. Hello, everybody. My name is Paul. I really don't uh, do public speaking, but you know, Sebastian told me I'm trying to get better at it. So I'm going to, <laughs> 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 right, so I'm going to tell you the story when I was you know, a little younger. Well, not that younger, but um, like, like ninth grade, you know, I started you know, trying to be a singer. You know, didn't work out. You know, I said it was about fun, you know, stick to rapping. And you know, I started practicing rapping and like, you know, okay, I'm starting to I'm feeling it. And then, you know, I just started rapping and rapping and you know, getting you know, trying to learn and work date and all that. And now I was trying to be now I'm trying to be a rapper. Rap me. Huh? Give oh. me a rap. Come on, the same one, do it. Uh it's not PG thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> we're all we're all of the Is anybody concerned with that? <laughs> no. Alright, <laughs> Oh, actually, sorry, wait, wait. 